Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, and thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. Art and I are with our favorite medical doctor, Dr. Liz Lister. Welcome, Dr. Liz. Good to see you again. Thank you. Likewise. Hi. You know, um, we have a lot of conversations, and you, um, you seem to have an overarching theory about uh, don't put stuff off, and, and if, if you feel something about yourself, ask somebody, particularly if it's on the medical side, a medical doctor. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about how uh, that is incorporated into your practice, your thinking? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I always am, of course, mostly I'm taking care of women, but sometimes I get to take care of men as well, which is a lot of fun. And what I've noticed that is that women, we are used to dealing with our bodies. We're used to dealing with our health. Uh, the statistics show this too. Women are the primary consumers of health services. Uh, even when the men go to the doctor, it's often at the request, <laughs> to put it nicely, of the women in their lives. Okay, if not pushed, like I made you an appointment, you're going to see the doctor. All right, and so to your point of preparing or, or at least having a low threshold, okay? What I observe for women, you know, when we go into menopause, we have big fluctuations in hormone levels, big symptoms are often the case, and women, we generally know what's happening, and a lot of times we can at least talk about it with doctors and, and hopefully get the help that we need. But for men, it's more gradual. Hmm. And have you heard, have you gentlemen heard of the parable of the boiling frog? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Frog's most... in the water, doesn't know that it's, uh, it gets the water, starts boiling so gradually, the frog adjusts to it, doesn't react to the water getting hotter and hotter and hotter until it's too late. Until they're a meal. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. And so that's what happens with men's testosterone level in particular. Okay. Men's testosterone levels peak at around age 18, 19. Okay. And then maybe stay stable in the 20s. All right. And then start to decline around age 30. Now, before I talk about the decline, I want to say something that I always say, which is there is a reason we don't want 20 year olds running things. <laughs> All right, so I just want you know a shout out to our audience here, okay? So not not in our twenties, okay. But starting at age thirty, men lose at least one percent of their testosterone every single year after that. So that's a big decrease by the time yeah. they're in their fifties or sixties or seventies, okay? Sure. All right. And men often, a lot of people are aware and think about testosterone with regard to its sexual role, sexual function, sperm production. That's all true. However, a lot of people, especially a lot of men, don't realize that testosterone is very highly responsible for energy, mood, metabolism. Lack of testosterone can cause depression. It can help bring on heart disease. All right, even certain types of cancer, even prostate cancer is usually mostly occurs in men whose testosterone levels are too low. Okay. Yeah, that's, a, that's an important point is that testosterone is a hormone and it's regulating a lot more than just our sexuality. Exactly. Brain, that's another good one. My brain just kicked in. Brain sharpness. All right, so... I see men in my practice in their 50s, 60s, where they're still in the job market, they're still competing with younger people, and they want to stay on top of their game. And testosterone is really important to help with that. Hmm. So you can uh, start doing testosterone hormone therapy, hormone replacement therapy with men uh, even before it gets to the critical stage where they might see the obvious results of uh, low testosterone. Exactly, yeah. Yep, that's exactly right. 
I always try to expand people's awareness of what lack of specifically testosterone for men can cause so that it doesn't go down that slippery slope as we were just talking about as you exactly what you were just saying uh that poor little frog who is not noticing some of these symptoms worsening or just you know chalking it up to intense work uh family pressures which of course that's all true that's all happening however uh the health and the hormone levels are a really really important part of that sleep quality all of this uh muscle mass a lot of the men i take care of when we before they were working with me they say things like i'm doing the same type of exercise but i'm not getting the same results and that is also on on that long list of indicators that's interesting the the uh uh the testosterone as a hormone helps uh build muscles so that's if you don't have it you could be doing the same exercise you don't get the same uh muscle response and you start getting flabby and you start getting weaker uh all of these are common symptoms as we get older older men 60 gee i just can't play baseball the way i used to you know that kind of thing um and you work out at the gym more and more and it's not doing any good so so let me let, let me see if uh uh for our audience are basically uh 15 and above and so for all of our male audience who are thinking they're comfortable in this hot tub it may actually not be a hot tub it may <laughs> in fact be a pot on a stove so would a right. good take away for uh our buddies in the hot tub that so they think is when they go to a doctor by the time you're in your your mid to late 40s even though you may not be exhibiting some serious issues be aware that you should be asking are there things happening and a lot of doctors okay. may dismiss this but i think that we have to be our own best advocate is to push ahead and say look i know things happen uh i'm not as strong as i used to be or have as much stamina what can we start doing now so i can keep in front of this as opposed to become somebody's nice next meal exactly so what are the best questions for somebody to ask their gp because they're probably not going to go to a hormone therapist uh, on day 1 just to get a testosterone level checked and don't let the trap of the normal range happen to you that's one of my i i have this cartoon framed on my wall where i sit with patients and it shows the person kind of slumped on the floor exhausted and above them is the reference range of the lab test and the doctor's pointing just barely inside the low end of the range and the quote is congratulations you're in the normal range yeah <laughs> that's good yeah well that's that's important because we're all individuals you know in testosterone levels especially i see it all the time the range at most labs is from 300 to 1100 already you can tell that silly how right. could it be such a huge range but i frequently get men their levels 310 and the doctor said they were in the range and that that wasn't the problem that wasn't why they're why they're feeling tired and foggy brained and irritable <laughs> and yeah. not happy sexually all of those important quality of life and health issues yeah and i remember uh, dr liz i remember we had this conversation or a similar conversation about uh, testosterone uh, quite a while back in one of our videos and uh, what stuck in my mind was that testosterone uh again as you said is not just a uh a, a hormone that regulates sexuality but it regulates mood mm. and that without testosterone without the proper level of testosterone men don't get more aggressive they get crabby that's right they get exactly right yeah and that that is a symptom of old what are they what do you hear crabby old man mm. that's right you got so it so that's a typical problem men really need to i think one of the things maybe the takeaway for our male audience is 
we need to not tough it out. Mm, yeah. You know, sometimes it's a macho to, oh, it's fine, I'll take care of it, I'll get through it. We need to not tough it out. We need to literally go to the doctor. Same way we don't want to ask directions. <laughs> we want to, we need to go to the doctor and ask for advice and have everything checked. And quite frankly, I know a lot of uh, men that didn't, when we were younger, 40, 50, did not have a regular routine, didn't go to the doctors every year, you know, for a checkup. Right. Uh, just went sometimes five years without ever seeing a doctor. I'm fine. Right. Um, <laughs> now, as you get older, of course, and Medicare kicks in, <laughs> that's a lot easier uh, not to do that, it's a lot easier to make it a regular thing mm -hmm. going once or twice a year. But for younger men, and our audience really is 50 and above, 50 being a younger man these days, uh, they really need to get on the case and start taking care of themselves, have a regular routine. Yeah, like you say, uh, Dr. Liz, get a baseline, at a minimum, get a baseline. And then yeah, sure. at least once a year, uh, go in and find out how it's changing, because if you catch if you catch these things early, there's lots you can do about it, because mother yeah. mother nature uh, doesn't control unless you let it control. In most cases, uh, you can always make adjustments as your body needs to adjust as as the aging process takes place and these normal things happen. Yeah, and don't be a boiling frog. Yeah, it may not be a spa. It may not be a hot tub. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Liz, thank you so much once again. You're welcome as always. Thank you, gentlemen. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.